We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. So, good morning, everyone. Oh, it's morning on my end. Um, a warm welcome to our lightning talk on reporting and ITA. Uh, my name is Bulandan Kowani, and I have my colleague here to support me, Ekai Nambenyo. So I am the program officer for Southern Africa, while Ekai is the program officer for East Africa. Um, he is based in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm based in Lusaka, Zambia. So this morning, um, we'll be taking you through um, a few tools of impact that Paradigm Initiative um, has developed. Um, these are tools that are aimed at combating some of the digital rights violations that we have been seeing on the continent and of course providing digital security. So um, as you can see, I have pasted some links. So as I speak or towards the end, uh, please feel free to access them um, um, and use them accordingly. Um, please, uh, let me just present uh, my... Presentation, okay, there we go. So yes, so as I speak, uh, please feel free to access the links, the platforms, um, or even after the session. I hope that you can see my, my presentation. So to start off, um, so this is a lightning talk on tools of impact that Paradigm Initiative has developed known as Reporty and IETA. Okay, so IETA is a digital security um, toolkit. Um, it was developed by Paradigm Initiative, of course, with the support of other partners. I'll try and keep this uh, very brief, um, considering that it's a lightning talk. Um, but basically, IETA is a toolkit that um, was developed um, as a response um, to provide um, you know, um, the necessary tools and information that are required for digital security. Um, so it's a proactive toolkit for digital rights actors. Um, it helps all of us really to stay safe and secure as we use the internet. Um, as I earlier mentioned, it was developed by Paradigm Initiative, but of course, with the support of other partners. Um, but also um, the main aim of this toolkit is to address the growing need to safeguard digital rights defenders, um, journalists, whistleblowers, and others that are working with sensitive information but of course, any other internet user can um, access and use this toolkit. Um, and also this toolkit is what we like to call a living resource. We know that um, you know, digital security is not static. Um, it's an area that is you know, constantly changing. So we are also committed to adapting it um, and improving upon it um, almost every year. Um, and of course, with the links that I've shared, you're welcome to contribute to this resource. Um, but also from this toolkit, we've been able to develop a game that we have named Digital Safety. Um, we did this in collaboration with Policy of Uganda. So with this game, um, you know, one is able to play it um, and then sort of assess, you know, their digital security weaknesses, their needs, um, and sort of areas that they need to improve upon. Um, a quick look at the toolkit. Um, so it's divided into several chapters. Um, you know, it gives a brief background, of course, into digital rights. So that's you know the basics of digital rights 101, um, into you know some concepts of you know digital rights. Uh, who are some of the main um, digital security actors? Um, what are some of the relevant um, digital rights events that one can get engaged in? And several case studies um, and model policy briefs and statements. So this is in case you as a digital rights defender you stumble upon AETA and you would like to um, get involved in you know, digital rights advocacy. Um, but of course, the main part is the second chapter, which really breaks down um, the different um, digital security threats and how to mitigate them. So it's from very basic things, like how do you create a strong password um, to you know, 
more advanced in terms of how do you encrypt your data? You know, could you know be it a journalist who is working on sensitive information? How do you avoid surveillance? Um, how do you navigate an internet shutdown? How do you use a secure VPN? Um, and so on and so forth. Um, it also goes on to speak about physical security. Um, as you know, digital security um, extends to physical security. So how do we physically um, secure our gadgets and devices um, and so on and so forth. Um, and of course it ends uh, with, a, with um, a section that's dedicated to internet shutdowns for the very simple reason that we have seen an increase in internet shutdowns on the, uh, especially in Africa. Um, you know, how do you get involved in that advocacy? How do you measure um, an internet shutdown over or how do you contribute to that? Um, so I pasted those links. You can access IETA on that link. You can also play the digital safety game. And I also went on to include uh, some of the digital rights reports um, that would be very helpful in terms of um, understanding um, the extent of digital rights violations in Africa currently. Um, and why the need um, you know, for such toolkits um, that mitigate um, these violations. So the second um, toolkit that I'll speak to is Reporty. So Reporty, first of all, is a Swahili word that means to report. Um, so most dialects um, um, that are very similar to Swahili in Africa, when you say Reporty, will immediately attach it you know, to, to the word uh, report. So in creating this platform, we really wanted to have a unique name that celebrates our African languages, but also one that is very um, easily understandable. Um, so with digital rights um, uh, violations on the rise and on the increase um, in Africa, you know, as part of the initiative, we wanted to design a platform that enables stakeholders and the public to report digital rights violations. Um, so initially, you know, yes, we know digital rights violations have been on the increase, but before this, we really didn't have that um, tool or platform that we could use to, you know, document, first of all, to have people report violations um, and then, you know, to document them. Um, so now that we have reported, this is possible. Um, so it's really a platform that enables stakeholders and the public to report um, digital rights violations. Um, it's accessible to everyone. So whether you're in the digital rights circles or you're an ordinary internet user, it's really a resource um, for everybody. Um, and more so, it's an online platform. Um, and that also makes it very collaborative um, in terms of, you know, we're able to collaborate with different partners um, across different regions um, in addressing digital rights violations. Um, so how it works is that on, you know, once a report is made, it's received on the back end uh, by Paradigm Initiative, um, who verify um, to see if indeed um, that event has happened or indeed um, that report is genuine. And then it is passed on to the, um, so we have different committees again on the back end. Um, and also just to mention that all information um, that is provided on this platform is treated with the utmost confidentiality. So all identities um, will be concealed. Um, and then also uh, maybe just to speak um, into some of the um, distress violations that can be reported. So it's from issues of censorship, cyberbullying, online gender-based violence, you know, illegal access to user information, content abuse, um, so even on censorship, um, you know, if you experience an internet shutdown in your region, you can log on to report it or Africa, report it, and we're able to investigate um, on our end. And the beauty of it is that there's also a map that's been integrated. So as a platform viewer, you're able to see a total number of reports that have been made, which regions are they coming from. Um, you're able to identify certain trends in terms of, you know, um, which region is receiving the most violations, what are some of the most prevalent violations? You know, what sort of types? Um, this also, like I mentioned earlier, has been good for documentation and for research purposes in terms of informing, um, you know, this, the, the extent of digital rights violations or the prevalence, but also in crafting, you know, solutions and um, um, advocacy around uh, mitigating um, digital rights violations. Um, so what happens on the back end when um, the report is received, 
Um, of course, it's assigned to different committees, um, you know, based on their stakeholder strength um, that are able to then provide the necessary justice. Um, also, just to mention that, um, um, in you know, in these committees are not just made up of paradigm initiative. It's um, different stakeholders, um, and as you notice there, I will paste some links after. Um, but different organizations are welcome to sign up to be part of these um, different committees. We didn't want it to be, you know, a, a paradigm initiative um, only activity, but we extended it further. So we have a steering committee. Um, this is made up of, you know, program officers from paradigm initiative that work in collaboration with dedicated officers from partner organizations. So really they give the second assessment of the violations. Um, they give feedback to the reporter if possible. Of course, this is done through the case manager who is based at Paradigm Initiative. Um, but overall, again, the role of this um, steering committee is that they provide leadership um, into how this platform will evolve going forward. And of course, uh, management um, of the day-to-day -day, um, um, that um, is involved in the platform. Um, we also have the other committee, uh, which is the case resolutions committee. So this is the, plat um, the committee that is in charge of, you know, solving these cases. Um, so we have also made provision. Um, so within this case resolutions committee, we have different clusters. So if it's a digital security issue, we have organizations that may assist in that area. Um, we have, you know, women's rights activists. We have digital rights defenders and different other experts. Uh, we've also made provision for escalation. So at the national level, um, you know, you can escalate to the different human rights commissions within the regions, um, but also um, at a regional level escalation to the Africa Commission on Human and People's Rights. Um, maybe just um, a bit more into who is, you know, within the different, um, committees, just in case you're thinking, where do I fit in? Because like I mentioned earlier, we would want this platform to be as collaborative as possible. So really we are seeking partners that want to, you know, join either of the committees. Um, you know, what is your stakeholder strength? Um, how do you see yourself contributing? So really we're looking for different experts, could be an advocacy organization, you know, human rights organizations, digital rights um, experts, researchers, strategic um, lawyers for strategic litigation. Um, of course, I mentioned um, the National Human Rights Commissions and so on and so forth. So in a nutshell, um, that is it about reporting and IETA. I will attempt to play um, a video, but before that, I don't know if we have any questions. We can take questions now and then I will play um, a video based on reporting in the remaining time that we have. Any questions so far? Please feel free to unmute any questions uh, based on the two toolkits that I have presented this morning. Kai, any contributions? Or should, okay, I'll play the video, please. If you have any questions, um, post them in the chat or we can take them out. Okay. 
Okay, so that was a brief video um, on how to make a report. I don't see any questions um, in the chat, uh, but please, if you'd like to ask uh, or make a contribution, uh, kindly unmute and speak up. Uh, hi, hi, Blanda. Um, hey, hi. Yes, uh, good morning. Yeah, so as we wait for uh, participants to prepare to make their comments or questions, so uh, I just wanted to make some additions. In regards to what uh, Bulanda, my colleague, has uh, presented on, um, to say that uh, uh, Reporti and IATA are, uh, you know, um, toolkits which have been developed by 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 Paradigm Initiative and its partners, and um, also to mention that uh, in addition to this existing as a PDF document. Um, this has also been uh, translated into various languages, uh, and, and we, we currently have a partnership with a, uh, a partner in Ghana who are localizing this particular document into a language in Ghana, and we are also doing the same in Swahili and in other languages in Africa, so that information that is contained in the IATA document is also accessible to those who, who, whose language of uh, uh, conversation or uh, engagement is a language other than other than English, so that is in tandem with uh, our initiative as a paradigm initiative to reach out to as many people as possible in the continent, and and, and most in, in, in interestingly is uh, the IATA um, uh, game, which you can you know get uh, you know through the IATA um, website uh, web page, so you can play a game um, which 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 kind of you know tests your knowledge about digital rights. And, and, and it's a very interesting game, uh, which, which of course has been mentioned before, but you know, just to emphasize that you could actually you know, try doing that during uh, your free time uh, at the Internet Governance Forum. And, and it's a very interesting one that uh, we, we think you know, will make um, the language of uh, the IATA toolkit you know, common man, instead of just being a preserve of those of us who occupy uh, the, the digital uh, rights uh, space in the continent. So that is just what I wanted to add, uh, but uh, uh, good work by my colleague uh, Bulanda, uh, thumbs up. Uh, I think we now open the floor to uh, our partners and uh, participants to ask questions, comments, maybe some points of disagreement, maybe suggestion for betterment you know, for the future, uh, or maybe if you have a better idea than IHR toolkit and the reporting, uh, you know, you're most welcome to make contributions. So over to you. Thank you so much, Ekai, um, especially for em emphasizing that these um, tools and platforms are accessible in um, different languages, for example, French and Swahili and that there are you know, more plans to expand into different other languages. I still don't see any um, hand raised or any questions. I take it that it's been clear, uh, but in the meantime, on the time left, perhaps we'll just look at one make a report. <laughs> Okay, what measures have been made to sustain the, this great initiative beyond Africa? Um, 
So it's really made to, uh, to be a platform that, um, you know, addresses discussions in Africa. Um, let me just stop that. Yeah, so it's really um, to address, um, you know, violations on the African continent. But beyond Africa, of course, we have made partnerships um, through the different committees that I mentioned. So we have partnerships with other digital rights organizations um, and, of course, other relevant stakeholders uh, beyond the continent that are able to provide um, the sort of justice that is needed depending on the digital rights violation. So the partnerships that are there, um, of course, um, on the back end, um, in terms of, uh, so that's the case resolutions committee. So not so much um, um, the steering committee. So it's steering committee for now solely African, but case resolutions um, much wider because you know we do recognize that violations um, you know affect everybody. Um, you, you know it's beyond regions. So that's why we you know thought to extend um, that case resolutions committee beyond just the African continent. But for now, it's a tool that is, you know, meant to save um, the African continent, but really no plans as of now um, in terms of expanding it uh, beyond its current scope. So I hope I have answered you, Mark. Thank you so much for that question. I don't know, Jess, do you have any questions for us? Okay, if no further questions, um, just to thank everyone um, for making it this morning. Uh, please, I have pasted the links. Remember to interact with the different um, tools. Uh, remember to share within your networks, with your friends, very, very useful tools. IATA for you know, digital security. Um, you could be an expert, but very good for refreshing your memory. Um, if you do spot something that needs updating, please feel free to reach out. Likewise, Reporty, you know, Shared with your networks, um, shared widely, um, so that you know we're able to document um, uh, all these distress violations that are happening, and that we, you know we get a better understanding of them um, as time goes by. So once again, from Ekai and I, on behalf of Paradigm Initiative, just to say thank you so much for attending our lightning talk, and enjoy the rest of the day and um, the rest of the sessions. Thank you so much. <laughs>